and we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with the time warping show that is still underneath that Jaws poster we mentioned during the intro, only known as Under the Radar. And while we stand under this makeshift poster that the maestro was able to make prior to the commercial break, we also are wearing those cool sunglasses that Doc Brown wore during Back to the Future 2. Just with the nostalgia of it all. But to keep up with this nostalgia and madness that we're here to deliver, folks, I think it's time for us to check out some screenshots and whatnots from the Twitterverse from this past weekend for another edition of the Four Squared Delight. And the first screenshot that we have up comes from the Twitter page of Dead Winter Comic with their game, Dead Winter. And the screenshot that they provided for this week shows our plumber friend, Lou, taking on a couple of the random zombies that are trying to take him out by trying to hit him with multiple elbow drops from multiple angles for the creator of this game, Riley, to say, by God, ba 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 God, ba ba God. <laughs> Which I think she's trying to be like JR from a classic episode of Monday Night Raw. And I would have to agree with the by gods that she's delivering. Because every single elbow drop is hitting these zombies in the shoulder, causing them to spin to the ground. Which is absolutely hilarious. And this screenshot automatically reminds me of a combination of Dead Rising off the record. With a little hint of fighting force in there as well. And I think it was the big guy who used to do the elbow drops in that game. So here's hoping in the near future for this game, besides elbow drops to zombies, they also give you an ability to do at least one tiger knee, or the possibility of hitting a zombie with a suplex. Even though it's dangerous since the zombie can bite you, they'll find a way, and hopefully they will for this game. And besides doing wrestling moves to the undead folks, the next screenshot that we have up comes from the Twitter page, Nom Apocalypse, with their game, Nom Nom Apocalypse. And the screenshot that they provided for this week, which I got a feeling was taking an old 1960s cinematic form, would show an alien running past the hamburger only to eat it to turn into a mutinized hamburger of doom! Only to go down the street and try to hurt somebody as a giant hamburger, by the way. And this screenshot automatically reminds me of a combination of one of those old classic 1960 horror films with a little hint of destroy all humans in there as well. And oh, thank you my show for reminding me, also reminds me of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Cause they did turn manic by the end of that film, and by the book too. And here's hoping in the near future that you get a chance to be these mutinized creatures to take on the town. Cause you know, there's too many games out there that features you being the person trying to take out the evil creatures and not allowing you to be them. So if you can't beat them, join them and then eat them. <laughs> Cause I got a feeling that's what that hamburger is going to do to that guy down the street. And besides horrifying ways to die from fast food that's going to try to take you out folks, the next screenshot that we have up comes from the screenshot page or Twitter page of EB Evo X Games with their game Jet Drift Dungeon. Nice. And according to the Maestro, the full name of the game is actually Jet Drift Dungeon Rally. Even better. And the reason why it's called that, folks, is because one guy who is in what appears to be a jet drifting vehicle with tank tread wheels, which is awesome, is trying to take out a whole bunch of random killer tomatoes that are attacking him. No way. So you're telling me this is an attack from killer tomatoes? Yes, I love it already. <laughs> 
And this screenshot, because we just said it, folks, automatically reminds us of a combination of Mario Kart with a little hint of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. And I think the animated version of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, too, because they were more animated in their actions than the actual movie version of it, which is still cool. And here's hoping in the near future for this game that they give you a better weapon to take out those litty lists of different form of tomatoes that are trying to take you out. Because that beam cannon is not working. You're gonna need a rail gun to take out all those tomatoes. So here's hoping they add one. And the next game that we have up comes from the Twitter page of Nick Muse with his said game, Untitled Solo Project, that we might as well call Wrath of the Viking Ninjas. And the reason why we say that is because the screenshot that they provided for this week, which shows our Viking ninja-like friend with a giant halberd taking on enemies left and right, dodging them, hitting them with the halberd, knocking them into the air, using an arrow for a little bit of a boost, ground pounding them with that same halberd, only to shoot the final enemy with a fadeaway arrow for him to make a cool pose in the center of the screen. And according to the maestro, he was able to do this in less than 15 seconds flat. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> and this automatically reminds me of a combination of, strangely enough, the movie Three Ninjas with a little hint of the video game Shinobi. Mostly because he moves so fast, you can hardly see him. Well, then again, that would make him a ninja, and that's the point here. And here's hoping in the near future, besides this Albert and arrow combination that he has, here's hoping that they add a shuriken that you can use to throw at enemies for a special attack to take out a multitude of different enemies all on the screen while he makes a cool pose. Now, I'm not sure which old game I had that used to do that. I think it was a Taiko handheld game I had that had a chandelier for a final boss, but here's hoping they add that in. And the last but not least game that we have up for this week comes from the Twitter page of Mars Band 64 with their said game, Roll Pumpkin. And the screenshot that they provided for this week lives up to the name of Roll Pumpkin, folks, because it features an old woman collecting a whole bunch of different coins only to turn into a makeshift pumpkin to make her way to the next obstacle course to collect more coins and to just roll off screen to end it all. Not bad. And this game automatically reminds me, strangely enough, of the Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries if they had a side-scrolling game with a little hint of Halloween Town in there as well. Or at least the spooky, spooktacular show that they show every year on Cartoon Network. And here's hoping in the near future for this game is that they have a time attack mode that you get a chance to use to actually truly test out the rolling abilities of this pumpkin granny. And the fact that she's able to roll this good at her age, pretty impressive, pretty impressive. You know, side note I wanted to add in. And if you guys want to check out any other screenshots and whatnots from the Twitterverse from this past weekend and beyond, you can head on over to the Twitter pages of not only Oliver Snyder's Octo Curio, Shot Underscore Games, Indie Rhymes, Playing Indies, or even under the screenshot hashtag of Screenshot Saturday. And if you guys want to get a good look of the screenshots that we liked for this week and get an interpretation of it for yourselves, you can head on over to our Twitter page, only known as the Double Agent 0012, where Maestro made a screenshot folder called Screenshot Back to the Future. Now, I'm really surprised you didn't add a 2 for that, but, eh, you know, you did it under short notice, and I appreciate it. And with that said, folks, we might as well head back to this music once again. And when we return, we'll be back with another edition of Yesterday's News right after this. 
So don't go watching those infomercials just yet, folks. And stay tuned.